Tyler. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Do you want to just kick off by saying who you are, what you do, and who you work for? My name is Tyler Matikow. I am AI Solutions Engineer for Lambda Labs. Wonderful. And how long have you been at Lambda for? I've been at Lambda for two years. And how is things going over in the AI solutions aspect of the business? It's been very busy lately. Uh, it is amazing. Everything new is coming out and the growth rate in what we do is phenomenal. Last time we spoke, we spoke a lot about supercomputers, obviously, naturally, and LLMs. And yesterday we heard the keynote speech where Jensen announced the next technological development from NVIDIA, the Blackwell. What do you think of such a huge huge piece of, I guess, compute, essentially, for teams doing, you know, building AI that we're supporting. Yeah, I mean, as Jensen illustrated in his keynote speech, the growth has so exceeded Moore's law, it's not even funny, you know, when you've grown a thousand times in eight years, and the need for growth is not subsiding. Uh, the models are getting larger and larger and more and more capable, and we're just scratching the surface. So the need for GPU performance and the need for more memory and the need for more storage and the need for larger data centers is growing and growing and growing. And what do you think about the sustainable aspect of, of having such huge compute that's going to take so much energy? Uh, it's kind of scary. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, but... Even without the sustainability thing, the practicality of the system is requiring everyone to build everything more efficiently. Um, you can't build a supercomputer anymore in a large city and a large, so you need to use and build in areas that are environmental responsibility. The whole idea is that we are building our data centers, as is the whole industry, and we are doing things like liquid cooling in order to do things as efficiently as possible. Yeah, it's great. And there really is like a general consensus in the industry, I think, how important it is to be sustainable um, and to make sure that we are taking care of the planet as we're all trying to do good for humanity as it is. It, he said that there's liquid cooling instilled in the new system. What other efforts does Lambda make for sustainability? I'd love to hear more about that from your end. Well, I think the number one thing everyone does for sustainability is usage. And that, that's what Run AI does as well. And the reality is, is that getting the most use out of the computers, running them 24 hours, seven, scheduling workloads, making sure that when a computer is on, it's running as efficiently and as frequently as possible. Because unfortunately, when these things aren't running, they're also not using, uh, using power and using resources. So it's really important to make sure that we utilize the resources as much as possible. Are you still seeing it as a challenge for your customers at the moment in terms of actual compute accessibility? It's lessening. Um, you know, we're all really working to make sure that the customers who need compute can get it. And, you know, it's why we're growing the cloud so fast, why we're growing so fast on the hardware side. Um, I think we are an industry leader on go to market and speed of go to market so that, you know, we'll be one of the first GB 200 companies to have them, have them available to the public. We were one of the first H 100 companies and we are one of the first GH 200 companies. And, you know, it does take planning and forethought. It's, you can't make a phone call and get it tomorrow but you can make a phone call and, and get stuff in a relatively quick basis in a matter of weeks or just a few months rather than years. That's great. So we're actually seeing with all of the technological developments that we're, we're having more options how to utilize our, our compute and get more out of our GPUs beyond run AI, right? Exactly, yeah. And you know, but the software is part of it. You know, things like run AI and, all, and our other partners and our storage partners and everyone else we all have to work together because you need a full solution. You need it to be able to do everything. Um, if you buy the computer and you're waiting to find the, find the software, to find the storage side, to be able to use it, you're really wasting your money. You really need to have come up and sort of think about it from end to end. I want to talk a bit about your own personal tech journey because you're in such an exciting role and I'm sure there's lots of people that would love to do what you do. So where did you start and, and how did you end up at Lambda? 
Ah, uh, okay. Um, well, years and years ago, I started, I was in medical billing software. Um, and then I did high frequency trading for 12 years in Wall Street. Uh, and I moved over into crypto and AI. And from that company, I ended up at Lambda. So I, I happen to have been on the bleeding edge of whatever the things at the time, but it honestly wasn't something I was looking for. It is just one of the things I'm a curious person and I like to play with the newest stuff. So I tend to be driven to working on stuff that is new and people haven't worked on before. So tell me a little bit about your team and how you cultivate innovation within your own team to make sure that you are always at the cutting edge of technology. Well, I mean, the biggest thing that we do is we have, a, from the CEO on down, our company is great as far as really looking at and playing with and being hands-on in the AI landscape. We started out, we were a company started by uh, a, a machine learning engineer, uh, Stephen Balaban. The second hire was also a machine learning. Started off writing software and realized that in order to do uh, the software that we wanted to do, we needed better hardware. So we started building hardware. And now we do still do software. We have a lot of software engineers, although most of it is to run our cloud. But we are still writing white papers. We are still doing, we are still doing industry leading benchmarks. We have lots of people who are waiting for our benchmarks before they trust NVIDIA's or AMD's. That's quite, that's quite a statement. I think I'm going to start waiting for your benchmarks, yeah. Tyler. We should, we should do a benchmark swap. Do a benchmark, absolutely. <laughs> so um, what made you, I mean, you, it sounds like it wasn't too much of a choice that you ended up in AI. Um, but, but was there a curiosity before? Was it like partially intentional to venture into that, into this industry? Yeah, I mean, when we were doing high frequency trading, um, when I was working for a hedge fund, this was always sort of the dream. You know, we did algo trading and the dream was the machines would actually be able to think for themselves. Yeah. Now, at that time, that wasn't possible. You know, there were people who promised things like that, but it was always the thought that we were going to do the predictive analysis and do real AI and do accomplish it. Now it's really possible and generative AI is just incredible. Where do you go for your industry updates? Where does one go when they're already at the leading edge of, of the industry? I pretty much just listen to my coworkers, but <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, obviously NVIDIA, you know, being a close partner of NVIDIA, they're like, and our customers. I mean, the most important thing is I find about new things every day because I talk to the customers and, and what they're doing is always amazing, you know, and it's, a lot of stuff, obviously, you can't talk about, but like, if you want to know what's really going on in the industry, being customer facing is amazing because just miraculous ideas every day that you couldn't possibly imagine even thinking of. And it's the most creative people in this industry doing the most amazing things. That's absolutely amazing. I can imagine to be surrounded by such smart people every day. Who, who needs LinkedIn? Absolutely not, yeah. <laughs> Although people find us on LinkedIn, you know, LinkedIn is a great resource. I'm not going to knock them, but but I will say, like, you know, data scientists, machine learning engineers are just the smartest people in the world. And yeah, I mean, they're, as we're seeing right now, we're just scratching the surface of seeing AI, like, solve some of life's major problems. Like, you know, when you see it doing drug discovery, when you see it, it's just unbelievable. It really is. And like when we see all these like prosthetic limbs that are now AI based yeah. and all of these things, it just it's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. And I think during the keynote address, uh, there was a little slide where Jensen was alluding to it. But now they're doing essentially seeing eye glasses instead of seeing eye dogs where you're going to be able if you're blind or and I imagine this is going to apply to uh, uh, other sense disabilities, you're going to be able to augment your reality with AI and function in the real world better than you would have before, which is incredible. It is incredible and scary all at the same time. Do you think there's any, do you think the fears are sub, like substantiated? Do you think there's anything for us to worry about? Which, well, everyone should just have a cabin in the woods <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's right to be fearful and, and realize there could be a worst case scenario with everything in the world. But no, I mean, generally, nobody's trying to hurt anybody. Checks and balances are generally in place with everything that's done. 
I, I don't think our robot overlords or AI are any danger, at least for the foreseeable future. Even Jensen, what, looking, standing there yesterday like a robot overlord? Yeah, I noticed he only had the small robot, not the big robots with him. So maybe there is something there. <laughs> the small robots were so cute, though. Yeah. I wanted to, like, pet them like dogs. Yeah, I think there's like one of the Asimov rules that, that every robot you need to be able to drop kick. If you if it's if it's too big and you can't like knock it off the stage, then then it's a danger. It's something to worry about. I just have one final question for you, Tyler. Any advice for people that want to join us in this industry that maybe are fearful or you know not sure how to enter into it? Something maybe you wish you'd known at the start of your career. Yeah, I mean the truth is is that. You know, AI has room for pretty much everybody. You know, there's so many diverse career paths and so many things that need to be done. Everything from people specializing in data centers to the scientists who write the code. And it's just really important to keep an open mind, to, to really understand and study what is going on. I will say you really do need to learn the basics, things like YouTube. And there's lots of free open source courses are just great ways to learn to speak the language. Um, but, you know, the truth is it just requires a healthy curiosity and, you know, an appetite for a heavy schedule and workload as well. <laughs> Tyler, thank you so much for your time. It's been such a pleasure. I'm going to let you go and know how busy you are. Thank you so much.